Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at another expected value problem. So in this problem, it says raffle ticket sell um, for a dollar each and there's 500 sold. Sorry, I read it differently than it's written. Okay, there's three different prizes, a $50 prize, a $20 prize, and a $5 prize. And then what we care about is it says, what is the expected value of a ticket? Now, when it comes to the probability, we're going to need to use this rule that tells us that since we're only having three tickets win out of 500, then that's you know less than 5% of the total tickets. So we get to treat it for independence and we'll use that when it comes to probability. Now, so far in the discrete tables that we've done, we've been given the table. In this case, no tables are listed. So I need to make my table. So remember, I need to list my outcome, the probability of that outcome, and then for the expected value, I'll need to multiply straight across. So the first outcome is I win. And if I win the $50 prize, don't forget I want my net winnings. I need to subtract the dollar I paid to buy that winning ticket. So I really only got 49 new dollars. Same thing for the $20 prize, it's only 19 new dollars with my original $1 coming back to me. And also there was that $5 prize. And it feels like we're ready to list the probabilities, but don't forget, not every ticket was a winner. There's also losing tickets, and since you paid a dollar to buy that ticket, and it's a losing ticket, you're out a dollar. We need to make it a negative one dollar. So I go to list the probabilities, and there's only one first prize, so one of the 500 tickets will be a winner. Now when it comes to the $20 prize, notice I'm writing one over 500 again. It seems like maybe it should be 1 over 4.99, um, but since we said we're treating it as independence, we can just assume that you know all 500 tickets were there. And in terms of that, um, if you took the decimal value of 1 over 500 and the decimal value of 1 over 4.99, they're close enough that we're going to be able to use those. And so the same will go for the $5 prize. But now, what is the probability of a losing ticket? Yeah, it's 497 over 500. And in case you weren't sure why, there were 500 tickets, and if we subtract the three winning tickets, the remaining amount of tickets is 497. That's how many losing tickets there were. So as I multiply straight across, I'm just multiplying my winning value with my numerator and keeping the denominator. And so in the last case, I'm multiplying the negative 1 with the 497. And now I'm ready to go ahead and add everybody up. Since they all have the same denominator, really I could just focus on adding the numerators in my calculator, which would be a little faster and get negative 425, but then I do need to keep it over 500. And for the decimal value, I find the expected value is you're going to lose 85 cents. So even though you pay a dollar for each ticket, it's the same as you know losing 85 cents had you bought 100 tickets. And here's another expected value problem that's a little bit of a twist on the ones that we've just been doing. This one says, for $300, a person with a .0003 chance of dying, it doesn't say whether it's a percent or not, but don't worry about that, you can buy life insurance policy that will pay $20,500 in the event you die. And we get that, what is the expected value question? So not a probability question, an expected value question. Just like before, I need to make my table. And in the past when we did it, it was either win or lose, but in this case, it's either you live, and the um, net outcome of living, you're out the $300 you spent on your policy. Otherwise, you die. And if you die, you won't get the money because you're dead, but we'll assume your household <laughs> is gonna get the payout. But remember, it's gonna be the net payout. So instead of the $250,000 that the family will be given when you pass, we need to subtract the $300 that was spent to actually buy the policy. Now we need to come up with the probabilities. And all we know is the chance of dying. So I can list that under die. But now I need the probability that I live. And if you remember, that would just be the complement. So 1 minus 0.0003. 
point zero zero three. So there's a point nine 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 seven percent chance, and I think I've said that too, too strangely, but anyways, <laughs> of living. So now, as I multiply across the first row, negative two ninety nine point ninety one. As I multiply across, that was an arrow. The second row, six dollars and six cents. And now I need to go ahead and add those up to get a final answer of negative $293.85. So that's the value of an individual policy. And again, so in the long run, if you bought a million policies, then yeah, a couple people are gonna die. And you couldn't buy a million for yourself, should I point that out? <laughs> but let's say you're buying it, you have a gazillion kids, I don't know. A couple people sadly will die and you will get paid for those couple people. But you will have spent so much more paying for the policies for the people who lived that it's the exact same thing as having just spent, instead of $300, $293.85 on every policy and had everybody live.